Hi, this is Jason from eRacing Academy, and today we're going to talk about Simagic's new addition to its ecosystem, the brand new steering wheel, Neo GT. Some say it's probably one of the best price performance steering wheel out there because at only 289 USD on its official website. And when you consider all the features and everything it has to offer, it's actually very promising. On paper, it sounds pretty good, but I think we're all more interested in actually how it really performs. Of course, before I go into this deep dive, we want to extend a huge thanks to Simagic for providing this GT Neo for this review. And obviously, if you're wondering what comes inside the box, the usual Simagic things, you know, such as the tweezers, the, the Allen keys, the connecting wires, the, the stickers for the knobs and uh, the, the buttons themselves. So you can actually make this steering wheel much prettier by customizing and sticking whatever sticker you want that is provided by Simagic in the box. So I think it's time that we actually do a deep dive into this GT Neo. In terms of materials, the first thing I notice is this high strength carbon fiber composite and this thermoplastic rubbery grip. It feels good. It's hard. There's a little bit of softness. It feels a little harder than the FX Pro, but still, I think the feeling is actually relatively satisfying. In terms of diameter, the size, 300 millimeters. It's not like the 280, 290 you get for the for the single seater formula series, or it's not like those 310, 320 millimeters you get for the, the GT3, GT4 guys. I think this size, the 300 millimeter diameter size is actually very, very good. It's versatile. It can pretty much deliver the amount of rotation distance that will satisfy you for pretty much all racing cars obviously except for rally cars but when you talk about formula cars gt cars lmp cars prototypes let's say i think this diameter pretty much does it all so what's on the steering wheel actually there's quite a lot when you think about it there's 10 customizable rgb buttons here we have two rotary thumb encoders we have two of these seven-way funky switches we also have four of these 12-digit rotary encoders. And to top that, we have 15 of these LED RGB lights. And at the back, we have this four paddle whole effect paddle module, let's say. And in terms of feeling, pretty good, you know. I know I'm basically shifting up or down. Also, normally we use these for the clutch. The travel is good, the reach is good, so ergonomically it's actually pretty, pretty satisfying. And in addition, whilst we're at the back, I want to show you this quick release. It is 51% larger than its predecessor, and that actually pretty much comes from this extra lip, which allows you to pretty much pull it towards you to take it out much, much easier. So in terms of design and ergonomics, it actually feels pretty good. All these buttons are are within reach they're very accessible these thumb encoders they don't feel as sturdy as the fx pro but they still feel good you know well positioned these central rotary encoders actually feel pretty good when you change the settings and obviously i i love these these um seven way funky switches i think they're they're a must to have on these steering wheels and and guess what we've got two And the beauty about this steering wheel is all of these buttons that have lights behind them, make it all flashy, actually are customizable. We could actually customize each button's color. And if the simulation you're actually, you know, driving on allows you to, you could actually have a bit of additional immersiveness, such as, let's have a look at the Simpro now. 
software. So we can change the lights, absolutely fine. It's pretty simple, basic, but now we can get telemetry feedback, which I think is pretty actually useful, pretty good. You know, it's, it's adding a bit more immersiveness as well. So if let's say we encounter ABS, the AD, ABS is activated, yeah, we can select it. And if obviously there is telemetry feedback, the this particular button will actually flash when ABS is activated. Same with traction control. When you enter the pit lane, it's flashing. Also DRS and any flag warning as well. So this is actually pretty useful. You know, if, if there, there's sometimes situations you're in that you need to understand when the ABS, you know, kicks in, when the traction control kicks in, when there's a flag warning or something, you don't actually see it maybe on, on the screen, but you get that feedback straight away from the steering wheel. I mean, having ABS and traction control feedback is actually very good, especially if you don't own one of the Simagic haptics. In addition to that, you can, you know, have your light settings for your RPM indicator, pretty box standard. And another good thing is you can actually save certain profiles. So if you're driving a, a particular car, you want the lighting to be in a certain way, just save your profile and use it whenever you want. The clutch paddles themselves, they can be calibrated, they can be synced, which is pretty good. You can adjust the sync ratio to however, however you want. And again, you know, there's a lot to offer. Just to note, these four central encoders actually do just give a pulse right now, as you can see on the Simpros manager software. But in the future would, you know, newer, let's say firmwares, they're actually gonna introduce them to be 12 digit absolute value encoders, which means they're gonna be actually position specific. Another product I would introduce you here is this product. It's called the Magling. It's Symagic's new, newest product, let's say, and it's pretty clever. It allows you to connect this GT Neo or any future UP Plus products directly to your PC, which allows you to use any Simagic steering wheel with pretty much any base you want. We will have a, another video when we actually do a deep dive into this, so I'm just gonna put this aside. Okay, now back at the GT Neo. So one of the good things I like about the steering wheel is actually it's pretty light. It's 1,100 grams. 
meaning that it actually allows you to maybe drive or use this wheel with let's say less powerful wheel bases but obviously i mean i've got it on my um alpha u now and compared to my fx pro it is lighter and for that reason i've had to actually slightly change the inertia and the damping setters of my base yes it is light but it's actually very very stiff you know thanks to this injection molded carbon fiber reinforcement composite sounds all amazing but it is actually very stiff i didn't feel any sort of bending whilst driving and honestly it's actually stiffer than my fx pro i keep comparing it to the fx pro which is probably not the best thing i should do when i'm comparing you know the top level steering wheel and let's say the entry level steering wheel of a of a brand but again it has a lot to offer for a much less price but the main difference has kind of come out with a bit of quality issues and for me the grip is the most important yes this thermoplastic rubbery you know grip feels good but i think after a while after some usage it's gonna get a little deformed or actually damage it's already starting to change a little bit of color i mean comparing it to the fx pro here we've been using it for a long time now and it still looks pretty good just a little remark there i just did say entry level but i'm only saying entry level because of its price tag 289 usd on its official website is pretty low considering what it has to offer anyhow to conclude i think it has a lot to offer for its price tag i've said this many many times but i think the main focus of this steering wheel the gt neo is actually the delivering compared to how much it's going to actually hurt your wallet and the ratio comes out that a lot to offer for a very little price and thinking about the the build quality the size all the additional features with the immersiveness when you know when you get flashing lights whilst you know abs or tc or flag activation happens it is actually very very good to have it sounds very good on paper and honestly the real thing doesn't disappoint at all so that's it from us as i said in the next video we'll be looking at the maglink the connection and how you can actually set up both on the sim pro and the sim hub softwares if you've liked the video please press like if you haven't subscribed to eracing academy youtube channel please do subscribe and stay tuned for our next videos until then see ya take care bye bye